I want to walk a mile. I'm, I'm nobody to you, but I'm somebody to me. So, uh, my Mac, also goes by Mama Savage, on the interwebs. I have, and I have crazy hair. I have hair that makes me look like I'm um, a psychiatrist. Anime, there's like superhero movies, all of them. Um, the guy that has uh, one, one full of them at some point in time. But yeah, I have crazy hair like that, and it's my birthday tomorrow. And in lieu of it being my birthday tomorrow, I want birthday kimchi. Now you might be asking, why do I have a knife and I want birthday kimchi? Well, what do you need to make birthday kimchi? Well, you need a knife, and you need radishes. Lots of juicy, delicious radishes. Now most people say, hey, you don't use radishes for kimchi, you use lettuce for kimchi. But let me tell you, I use radishes for kimchi. Oh, brain, brain, brain blast. Sorry about the, the white situation there, but there's some back noise. But I think it makes it a little better. So, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making sugar, malt vinegar, chili powder, not chili powder, chili uh, paste, real chilies, um, and I'm just going to ferment it overnight, and then tomorrow I'm going to wake up with thinly sliced, sugary, pickled radishes, and I'm going to enjoy birthday kimchi, radish kimchi, so technically radish kimchi, you might, you might, you can argue in the comments below, tell me what do you, what do you think, do you think radish kimchi is kimchi, do you think it's kimchi if you add you know, hot peppers into the uh, pickling mix. I mean, you are supposed to add peppers in any way. It's like a spicy fermented thing, right? The radishes don't just don't taste that good on their own. So I thought, hey, what better way than to spice them up, sweeten them up, and you know, just break down a little bit of that hard fibrous material that makes it taste like crap, which that's what kind of tastes like. Kind of tastes like crap. I can't even eat. I can't even eat it. As it is, I can't even eat it. So we're gonna be making radish kimchi together, and I'm gonna be doing a bit of chopping. We're gonna be doing a bit of cooking, and you won't have to look at all my hair for all too longer. Uh, so let's just get into it. I already got my radishes. I already half sliced, half diced, half rotisseried. Well, not rotisseried, but there's one thing we're gonna spin, and it's the look on kimchi. So I got my, the end noticed, I already got a cutting plate, I got my bowl, and I got my knife. Now for this first part, this is really all I need. I don't know what that is over there. Looks like a guitar. That might be a guitar? Is it a guitar though? Probably. Probably just a guitar. Although I don't really play any other instruments. I used to play tuba. That's a pretty thing to put up to your mouth. A pretty big thing to put up to your mouth. I don't know if I could fit a guitar in there. I mean, you just can't, you just can't straddle like playing a guitar with your mouth. I mean, some people can. They're pretty talented, but I don't think I'm that talented. And it's kind of funny, you know, what people consider to be talent in the world. I consider all kinds of things to be talent in the world, but. There's one thing I don't consider to be talent, it's the taste of radishes. Let's, let's just say they're not very talentful. They're kind, of, they're kind of crappy. They taste like crap. So basically all I'm doing here is uh, just slicing them. Just giving them a good... Just making them into small quarters. Oh, I'm not sure you can really see that. Just small little pucks. And then from there, I am going to infuse the it's vinegar, sugar, and hope that I get them mixed right, because if I don't, I'll have to put either... I'm starting out with less, more than I am starting out with more. So that if I screw up and the taste isn't right, I can just add whatever I need to add. And I can go from there. Man, man, look at, look at them, look at them radishes. Radish shishish. That's some good looking radish shishish, eh? That's thin slices. Beautiful. Beautiful thin slices. Don't roll off, don't roll off on me. 
Good luck. That doesn't take a lot to slice radishes. It's, it's, it's like the half of the consistency of potato. So it doesn't take a lot. You can easily slice yourself if you have your fingers in the wrong places. So to say, keys. But yeah, I'm just really doing it to celebrate my birthday tomorrow. I'm about. I have, I have a confession to make. I was planning to go out with my birthday, but I was trading financial instruments, which all people shouldn't do. And I made a few bad trades. Now, you might be thinking over exaggeratingly, oh, he's lost all his account. I'm, gonna, I'm saying now, no, I haven't lost all my account. I also have checks coming in from acting work that I do on the side. Go figure. Oh, he's a guy from New York. He does extra casting work. No, I'm not from New York, but I do have a bit of experience and background acting. I've done maybe 30 things in the year, and there's checks that come maybe like it's a month from when you do the shoot, and it's like 100 bucks every day you go. So I might have three grand from that total in a year. So, I mean, like, no brainer, not bad, right? So that's, you can live off maybe 10 grand a year in Canada where I live. Uh, so that's, you know, not, not bad. So, I, you know, I, I don't have no money, but I have less money than anticipated earlier when I wanted to have these plans drawn out, which I thought, hey, I'll put some of that money that I make onto these trades into that party maybe, but now I have just like less than what I thought I had. So I don't really have a plan for a party now. I was going to go out, I was going to go to a club, I was going to intermingle with, you know, a few people, but I'm 30. I'm 30, all these people at the club are 10, 12 years younger than me, it's Canada, the legal age is 18. The legal age was 21, I might have a better chance intermingling with people, like in the States. But I'm 30, single, and I'm like, hmm, what do I do? I don't have a Google Drive application for girlfriend submissions. Uh, I, like, I have no, no plans for people. I have no friends, and I don't really know what I'm doing with my life. I'm currently unemployed and making most of my income off background and financial trading stuff. And it's like, well, I, I don't really have what it takes to be able to celebrate my existence on a day... The semblance day of my birth. So I thought, okay, well, my existence feels very poot, very, very moot, or doot. Essentially, all those sounds you hear off a trumpet or a tuba. Oop, doot, and oot. It's a tuba, you know, so it's a bunch of oopa oopa. But I don't feel like there's any oopa oopa happening on my birthday as much as I would want it to be so oh I did another little round round shin there that I haven't HD eh? so but weird I'm just noticing stuff make sure I don't nothing more in there but yeah that's the kind of that's the thing so I thought okay well I'm gonna be hungry tomorrow I'm gonna want to have something that I like so it's come to the conclusion kimchi what do I like kimchi? It's just like, hey, I'm looking at this Silco kimchi, which is cheap as heck. You could buy it at the store, but I wanted something a little bit homemade, something a little bit heartfelt. I thought no one's going to make anything for me, because I don't have anybody to make anything for me. So I thought, hey, I'll, I'll cut up some radishes. I'll lick a few knives. You know, and it'll taste good, except radishes taste like crap, so I can't lick the knife. I can't make, like, cake batter and, like, lick like the spoon afterwards, I'll just get a knife, I'll probably cut myself, if that's the case. Like, I don't want to end up cutting myself, and then, like, me starting the cutting habit, and then going into other things, and then, just, just like, I don't know, like, all of a sudden, the toe is gone. Like, I can't have things that are protruding from my body all of a sudden falling off my body. I'm not into that. I'm not really into that. I'm, I don't intend to get into that. The, the, the best thing I think I could want right now is, uh... Being able to transform into something a little stronger. That would be nice. But I can't always get what you want. Want. You know, there's that song. Can't always get what you want. You try sometimes. But you might find you only get what you need. Or something like that. Anyways, back to cutting all these radish eye by hand.
I don't know why I say radish eye. Radishes. Radish. Radishes. Radishushas. But yeah, I'm just kind of making my, my way down. Slowly, but surely. Just getting through them. One at a time. And it's probably going to take me... Probably take me about half an hour. First I have to, you know, take the rest out of the bag. I have to wash them. That was the easy part. Um, but yeah, cutting them individually. I don't have a julienne. Um, or sorry, a mandolin. It's a julienne or um, slice chop them in even proportions very nicely. So I kind of just got to go off my own cutting skills. Hoping that not too much music plays for me. Of uh, sad violins. I'm just, I'm just really, I guess, happy that nobody's, nobody I know hates me so much that they uh, bring over a violin and start playing it badly, and sadly. Um, but once I get all these done, I'll bring over the little bucket that I prepared, and we're going to load it with malt vinegar. It's already got sugar and chili powder, and I'll show you that in a minute. And I don't think it's going to ferment entirely overnight, because it's already probably 10 o'clock p.m. And, you know, um, the only people that are really coming over to my place tomorrow are um, my landlord and my mother. Because the landlord is coming to inspect a door that he doesn't want to repair, but he thinks that he can shirk off the responsibility of repairing. Um, but there was ants underneath the door, and I had been able to get rid of the ants after noticing they were there. Um, but they did a number before I even discovered they were there. And you might say, hey, well, why do you have ants? Is your place dirty? I'm going to tell you. It's prenuptial flights, and my place is very close to the ground. And you know what? Ants just find their way in places where there isn't sufficient caulking or whatever else that needs to be there. And when they're chewing wood, if they find a place that's dry, regardless of if there's, you know, meat or candies or whatever hanging around, which there weren't. But, um, yeah, so ants happen to be forming in my patio door, so the landlord's coming over because I had to get him to um, take a look at it. And I was going to get a free estimate from some dude who does patios and doors, like an actual professional, not just a landlord that doesn't know how to do anything and won't seal it properly, won't um, put the, what do you call it, the flaring? I think it's called flaring. The like metal part that's underneath the door that protects it from water damage. Like that just, it, it all needs to be sealed off. I think he's trying to say, oh, I, I, know, I know how to do it. But then he's, he obviously doesn't know how to do it. And then that's really upsetting for me. Because that's almost like, hey, guy, you want, you want me to call the rental board? I mean, I pay what I pay. And, you know, I've been here for years. Literally years. And, you know, it hasn't been too much of a problem for you. And, you know, I paid for parking. I don't even get to rent out my parking spot, even though I pay for my parking spot. And he has yet to figure that out with the board. He says, oh, yeah, you should be able to, you know, put anybody you want there. But when I rent it, all of a sudden I have people from the other uh, units who say they're on the board of some sort for the whole rental apartment building. They're saying, oh, you can't rent it out. It's a safety issue. We don't want people who we don't know being there. And they don't realize I was renting it out to old ladies who had very nice calm demeanors who were parked long term so you always would know who was parking there like it's not like a willy-nilly by the day thing i'm not that kind of a person that i don't want to that i have to want to bother with people uh, different people consistently just to get a little bit on the side i mean it's essentially doing you know one day's of work and vetting them and looking them up and seeing if they have any, you know, past history on the internet or whatever. You know, making sure that they're when they park and they say they're going to go somewhere to work nearby. 
that, you know, like they're, you actually see them off one day and uh, you actually go in that direction where their work is. You know, you know, easy stuff like that. You know, you make sure they're not putting anything around. You, know, you check the ground. And it's, a, it's honestly a lot more work than I was getting paid for. But I was enabling opportunities for people who needed parking. And they were going to the work. You know, people were being helped by them with their work. Everybody was happy. And now I'm out of that little bit of income, which wasn't really worth my time anyway. But, you know, I didn't have to do much. They would just park. They would be happy. I'd check in, you know, every month. And they'd send me a payment or whatever it is. I've got two parkers now. And it's, so it's, there's been different prices. Uh, just because the time of year and when it started and what it was necessary. And how, how easy it was to deal with one of them. So, all right. So there you have it. There's all my foods. Plus the others that I've already chopped up. We're going to put this in there. Because they all taste like poop poop. And I, all I can smell is poop right now. And I'm sorry I don't have a better camera for all this. But, you know, one that catches my face. And what's going on down there. I just don't. I don't. I don't have the best the best camera set up in the world. Okay. And let's just get that light out of the way. Uh, still bright. Still bright. Better. Much better. Right. Time to bring over la sauce. La sauce. Le sandwich, not le sauce, la sauce. And get rid of this. So, ooh, this did not turn out to clean up good. Yeah, it's a little bit better. So, we got chili powder, chili paste. I'm doing some little spilling out. Maybe going by the back end would be a little bit better. Yeah, some chili paste and all that on the bottom. A bit of sugar. A little bit of salt. Just a little bit of salt. Because it needs a little bit of salt. And I'm just going to... Oh, you guys, you see, you could shoot, you could, you would, you would, you best see this. So that's what I got going on here. I'm pouring in malt vinegar. I'm just gonna seep it in a bit. Now I actually wonder if I should use sugar, water, and salt, but I'm just using vinegar and salt and sugar and chili powder, so it's I don't know. I'm just gonna swirl it around a bit, mix it up. Just to get it even, so I don't have a bunch of mix matched tastes everywhere. Now that that looks okay. Ooh, that's hot and spicy, and not as sugary as I actually want it to be. So I need more sugar. And let's get the sugar. Just, uh, just grab one of these. Stir the sugar. We want, when I say sugar, I mean sugar. Like this is. Empty. You get to see my angle. My life fully empty. See, some people are like, hey, you really eat a life and it's like half full. I'm like, hey, buddy. You're, you're too optimistic. Oh, there we go. I say I think you're too optimistic. Oh, let me just get get down here. Uh, where's that? Uh, 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 uh. There we go. So we just got the sauce. We're stirring it away. Got all the radishes right here. I'll be using that in a minute. This 
this on the good. It's better. It's much better. Ooh, wow. When your voice goes low, when you try some things, that you know it's going to be good. That's your brain telling you, ah, I'm relaxed. This is the kind of taste I like. I can almost go acapella now. All right, so all of these are just gonna go right on in there. You know, let's make this make this look a little bit better. And here we go. Cause I don't know how you should show up in my mouth later today, maybe tomorrow. But you're gonna be there. Be tasted just so you know. Just so you know. That's the show. I, I don't know how to finish that off, but if you got an idea about that, you let me know. All right, so I don't think I'm gonna have enough vinegar or sugar for this mix. Now the problem with that is I'm either going to have to take some of these out and then reuse it in vinegar again. That can always be a little bit uh, iffy. Or just leave it be as is. Oh, sorry, that was my, my uh, cover for my camera coming undone. Or try to make another one with this, with different type of sugar that is actually fruity. I usually use for drink mix, and I don't think I'm going to become uh, satisfied tomorrow if I do that. Also, I want to share with it, share this with my mother, who's coming over, because she doesn't trust the bad mode, and I don't either, just because of various things. And like I, I walked into the place, I remember the first time I seen it years back, and I asked him one question: Is the top of the ceiling fan in the kitchen? clean or am I going to find dust on there because that's a huge indication of a liar and he goes oh no it's clean like anybody would do right but I do I ask them you know to share that they themselves don't know how clean their place is that they know that there's you know spots that have gone uncleaned that are easy to access and it's just like whatever was out of sight was off their mind so there could be other things that are out of mind which they are, you know, not recalling, or there's other things that are in need of attention. And you know, just called upon that to say, hey, okay, got to make sure what's, whatever needs attention, just we need to do that before I'm going to be interested in renting. But I'm interested in renting somewhere. So, you know, it seems like an acceptable place. Let's, you know, work through a few of those. Maybe we can get back to each other. Um, but yeah, I went up and I checked the ceiling fan, just took a chair, went on top, swiped off. My finger was dead black. I'm already brown. So it was like, hmm, you know what? I'm brown, but this is browner than I am. And, you know, like, no offense to the ceiling fan, you know, but the ceiling fan is, you know, like wood powered, but this is like black, black on my finger. And that's grime and that's dust, and you didn't want, you didn't like there. And you just said you did, and you lied. And, you know, so I'm just wondering now what else is wrong with the place or, like, what has been dilapidated or you know what am I gonna have to deal with I've had to deal with a ignore that I've had to deal with a faucet breaking so I couldn't have hot water without having to use a wrench every day and that was tedious because then eventually like the little metal piece had broken and it was like a 10 minute fix for the plumber after four or five months and I, I kept telling him I need a fix and he's like I'm not fixing it you, you just gotta deal with it. He's like, I'm, I'm not sending a dude. I can't send a dude. I can't even inspect right now. There's that. So now it's the patio door and the fact that there was ants underneath because maybe I guess caulking or ceiling on the side or the um, shielding wasn't properly secured. Maybe it just flew up. Maybe yeah, we get winds, we get snow, we get ice. Could have been some thermal expansion somewhere that just broke it. Whatever. Maybe. And the ants, you know, they got in, they tore away at it more. I'm going to have to deal with that tomorrow on my birthday. 
So, great birthday, but at least I get to see family on my birthday. So that's the only good thing that's come out of that. But I wouldn't even see family if it wasn't for the guy coming over to try to fix something that he doesn't know how to fix, which he thinks he probably won't be able to fix, which I know that he's probably not the best person to try to fix it. The, sad, the worst thing is, you know, I've, I've, t I've had to take the doors on the patio. There's two sets of doors, inner or outer. I've had to take the inner set off. And in doing so, there was, like, this little thing on the bottom, which um, I guess protects against wind and other things, helps it be a stick on the guide on the bottom of the door. But it's like a flat metal piece, only about yay big. And it's just, like, square. But this flat metal piece... It's been off the door because I took it off because I had to put the door, you know, standing up. I didn't want it to be one side of the door and then this giant metal piece grinding into the floor, putting pressure undo where it doesn't really need to be. So I took it off so it's full flat of the door on the ground so the pressure spread out so it doesn't damage the ground. Um, but then that's that's been in my cupboard for since last winter, and it's already fall of 2022, just to give you a time frame, and it's been there ever since, um, but yeah, that hasn't been fixed, so landlord, I won't say any names, but if you're watching this, if you ever find this, which you, I bet, I bet a hundred dollars you won't, I honestly bet a hundred dollars you, you won't, you won't ever, that, um, yeah, that's, that's been in need of repair, and I've, I've said it's been in need of repair for a long time, and it hasn't, some kind of repair. I, I don't think you're going to do any sort of good trying to fix it yourself. Um, and we are getting a person to do an inspection on it. So they're probably going to inspect whatever you do. And if they say it's wrong, I don't know. It just doesn't help you. And it doesn't help me. So let's just put that into perspective. It doesn't help either of us. Um, maybe just leave it, to the, leave it to the professional who knows how to do it, who probably in the long run will save you a bit of money on the work that's done uh, and you know that's the upkeep on that specific window because if they do it professionally and it's okay you know you might be saving yourself more money than the cost of all supplies of, and trouble and time you know because time is money time is it's expendable you don't get time back you know it might save you a little bit more I hate to tell you, but that's why people become professionals. It's to, you know, speed progress ahead in a good way and actually make something good happen in people's lives and help them with their problems, not try and hinder their problems. Oh, oh that's like tasty. Like, like a, like a animal trying to shit in your mouth. Oh, like a deer. Oh, that's, oh, oh I can only hope this is going to turn out better. You know what? This is going to need secret sauce of Canadians, maple syrup. And here we have your president's choice. All 100% pure maple syrup product of Canada. In a glass bottle and a resealable cap. One of the many staples of Canadian life. And you'll never know where it comes from because it's law books. And they're all across the country. And they own various stores from Superstore. I believe they own Superstore. And maybe Mayfair. A lot of other places. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna. I don't want to use too much of this. But that's enough. Just kind of tapping it up by eye. And a little bit more vinegar. Now, if I didn't have the maple syrup, I wouldn't put the vinegar in. But, because the maple syrup has a little bit of sugar to it, I think I can do this now. Now, they're going to be fully dunked. I got a little bit of chilies in there, but I don't I don't know if this is really enough chilies at this point. This is, so, like, this is more vinegar and more liquids than I had um, initially anticipated. That's what it looks like now. Not too bad. Let me just give you a better angle here. I just want to try and get like a little bit better seated into the liquid here. Um, I 
need to try the water, some spiciness. Now it's not as spicy as I'd like. Now I'm a guy who's been, you know, eating like Jamaican spices throughout my life. Chilies, Chinese food, you know the deal. So I need a little bit of extra little spice than the normal person. But not to say I like spice, like I like hot meat. I won't eat ghost peppers. I won't eat, I, don't, I won't do the one chip Pocky challenge. It's just, I like the taste. I think the taste is good. Like, I love gochujang. Was it that? Gochujang chilies. That sweetness of them is something else. I, I mean, you just don't, don't normally get that aside from uh, that Jamaican pepper. That one famous Jamaican pepper. Uh, scotch bonnet. That has a taste more than it has a heat. And people complain about the heat, but you know what? It's. It's really a taste. If you taste that taste, you know you're getting a little bit of heat. And it kind of comes with the taste. But that's one of the peppers, of the two peppers that are in my life, that I feel are more food oriented towards tastes. So, let's see how that is now. Remember, I don't want to go over, but I think this will do. Yeah, that's enough. That's spicy enough. I'd say that's pretty good. So I'm sorry I can't really give you exact measurements, but you know what? If you make it at home and you find you want to make it the right, the way you want it to taste, and just start off slow with all the things you need, and if the problem occurs, Oh, just make another little, uh, just pour it all the juice into another bowl and just start adding more and more. Mine's too much. Um, I don't know, go with add some maple sugar or something. Yeah. Spice on its own is like, no. Yeah. Alright. So that's done. Let me get the cap for this. Uh, that's not the cap for this. Son of a gun. Where did the cap go? Behind the scenes play by play. We have no cameras, no shop. So you can lock that in. Yeah. Oh, I'm in, in my shoulder. I just get that light for you. So this is what we're gonna be, I'm gonna be putting in the fridge. Ah! You gotta shake it. That's it's like a little rule. But don't don't take your thumb off the top. If you shake it and you just have your hands like this, it's gonna go flying out everywhere. So always secure. Shake. And if you really wanna go at it, you got your thumb and your palm along the side of the top. So that the whole way, you know, it's covered. Get your ting, get your fingertips, you know, the bottom. And then you can really shake it up without worrying about a lot of the wire coming out and parts coming undone. I mean, this doesn't have like a rubber seal, so it's not going to get super great. And I should probably heat this up. So that's how you make pickles. I'm sure I can heat it up to like boiling and then you put it in jars. But I don't want to put it in a hot um, plastic jar. Or plastic container. That's just me. Something about plastics number five or something on the news I read a long time ago. I just won't do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is in the fridge and that's my kimchi for tomorrow. Maybe next week. Maybe I'll find another smaller container to put some of this in and give it to my mother to go. Go figure. I'm giving stuff away on my birthday instead of getting gifts on my birthday. Feels almost as bad as how Radishes taste before they're fermented. Feels like shit.
Hurry up. Kimchi's done. It's been 35 minutes of my life that I've enjoyed sharing with you. Uh, if you want to see more, well, uh, you can follow Born Savage Video Games on YouTube. That's B O R N S V G Video Games. Or you could find me on my TikToks channel as Born Savage, or my Facebook page, Born Savage, or my Instagram page, again, Born Savage. That's all B O R N S V G. And, um, yeah, also my Twitch channel, Born Savage. So twitch.tv slash Born Savage. Is it twitchtv.com slash Born Savage? I don't know. They, they, that's, it used to be Justin TV. They've changed so many things about it now that I don't have a clue what the naming schemes are. I'm honestly looking to venture into crypto um, streaming platforms. So, like cryptocurrency, not like crypto puzzles. I don't really do the puzzles. I don't know. I'm not like a puzzle guy. Um, but yeah, I'm looking to get into streaming on crypto centric streaming platforms and becoming a big name in the crypto world. Maybe owning a lot of XRP or something. Uh, even though they're kind of banned in the US. But this is Canada. And Canada doesn't follow the same rules and you don't have to. So it doesn't matter where you are, what you do, as long as it's fine for you. Which is what most of the case is. It's kind of how people pick just about everybody lives in life. They don't give a crap about others, they just do things for themselves, which I think is selfish. But if things aren't hurting others, then it doesn't matter. Yeah, I got some knives and some stuff to put away. Cut it bowls and call it empty. Hope I don't get any emotional damage from this tomorrow. Slap emotional damage. Yeah, that's uh that's it. Uh thank you. Make sure you uh, hit the follow subscribe buttons. And don't forget those notifications, and just come check me out on my other socials, because I've got a lot that's not being put up there, but uh, for my birthday, I'm going to put a little bit up there, and I think that's going to be a little bit fun. So, good night. Honestly, I've got to get back to watching like three, four hours of YouTube videos that I've downloaded. I don't do it for a job, I just go get Wi-Fi, public Wi-Fi. Download all these videos on like 5 megabits per second, and sometimes they're like 300 megabytes. So, I'm usually there a while. I have to buy a coffee sometimes. And, uh, but then they know me. And there's public Wi Fi and like libraries that are, if I go at the right time, it's perfect because I don't have to pay for anything and they don't serve anything anyway. And it's all free and no one cares. People probably care and get bad news. But people have to tolerate it because that's their job and that's the place. And so it's great. But at 30, you know, I just, I just don't like how to do that. And it's getting quite depressing. And it's just a lot of work. Obviously, I'm at my ends where I'm tired. Like, I have work skills and work experience. And I can't find any, like, actual work. I'm applying everywhere. It's just everyone's picking everybody else. And I guess that's what's most infuriating. Like, little 16-year-old people, humans, they're getting work with no experience. And then they're getting trained, and people are saying, well, where's your experience? We can't hire you unless you have experience at your age. It's like, what am I... Is this, is this bullshit? Anyways, I'm hoping kimchi will cheer me up in the morning. I know it's not gonna, but... You gotta, I don't know, you gotta just keep trying. Oh, that's the wrong, wrong way to say it. Uh, try doing something different. Maybe you'll find something that... Um, it gives you some excitement or some elation, even if it's just a little bit, because it's something different, not because it's maybe something good or something better. But you can't always count. The thing is, you can't always count on something being good. But you can count definitely on something different. So, you know, try something different. If you, f you get to go through so many things, and you, like that you're looping around to like the first thing that you're doing, you're probably going to have forgotten like, all the ins and nuances of that first thing you've done already. Uh, it'll kind of be a new experience again for you. It'll be kind of something different. You'll have other skills that you've learned, so you might be going at that thing differently. Like, you go to the 
circus every year, whatever you have, amusement that come by every year at a certain period of time in the year, usually summer. You know, it's like, okay, they have the same rides every time, but they're also a little bit older every year. Maybe you can handle the next biggest ride. Maybe you're better off at the skill games. Maybe you can reach the whack-a-mole games quicker, like you have better eye-hand coordination. You know, things just are different. And in a sense, that is a reason for relation. A reason to be excited, because your brain is literally excited having to think differently about the thing you're doing. So, I wouldn't say it's happiness. Some scientists would say that you know, synapse response is like from things happening and your brain firing in different ways is releasing chemicals that are associated with happiness. Um, but I think that's something people have to find on themselves. Like all the stuff that makes me happy, I'm really not doing it right now. And that's what I realize is kind of keep me down in the dumps. And uh, I gotta do I gotta do more things that maybe are making me unhappy um, to help progress me forward with the things that make me happy. And then that's just life, right? You sacrifice a little bit of happiness somewhere, you trade, you're getting happiness back. It's like, okay, you're balancing the scale. Of, that's essentially what that is. Just balancing the scale of life. Going, like, it smells okay, it doesn't smell like, it doesn't smell like crap, but it tastes like crap. It's gotta be fertilizers or something. Or they're feeding it pig manure is a fertilizer, which I bet they do. In Canada, that's a huge thing. Unfortunately. These vegans don't even realize they're eating pig poo. And these are pigs that are like, going to be sent to slaughter because they're pigs meant for food. And it's a really sad situation. People don't really know what to eat in real life. You know, it's, it's kind of strange. Like, you just think you're going to be eating this and that. There's people who, I mean, look at CBC Marketplace. They have big scallops. I didn't even really realize this. Apparently, they make scallops out of, like, tofu or something. Or, like, other pieces of different fish. And that's just weird. It's just weird. Like, they, they don't even say it on the menu. And they just say, oh, it's fresh scallops. But they're not fresh scallops because they're not even scallops. And they're not fresh because they're from some fish that's been frozen and then rethawed and then put in water or vinegar or something and then deep fried. It's like, whoa. You don't, you don't even have any indication whatsoever, and when you ask, like, the server or the chef or the owner, they just say, Is fresh scallop? As if it's some French delicacy, and that we're not supposed to know, and realize it's not, and they charge them the same prices as actual scallops. It's a huge scam. But yeah, that's, that happens. All across Canada, across the States. So, you know, like, you never really, you never really know, but what is surety to the unknown when you're not really sure what you're unknown of. Yeah, I guess I can't leave a lot to that. That's kind of how I feel. Goodbye!